Imagine waking up tomorrow to find that your house, your car, even your favorite painting have all been turned into digital tokens, tradable with a single click. Sounds like sci-fi, right? Well, buckle up, science enthusiasts, because the future of ownership is already here, and it's both thrilling and terrifying. Hey there, my brilliant bunch of binary dreamers. Theodore here, your slightly jaded guide to the digital frontier. Today, we're diving headfirst into the cryptic world of cryptocurrencies and tokens. Our expert hosts are about to unravel how blockchain technology is turning everything from your mortgage to Mona Lisa into tradable digits. Get ready for a mind-bending journey that'll make you question the very nature of value and ownership. Let's tokenize this conversation, shall we? Hey everyone, welcome back for another deep dive. We're diving into crypto today. Well, more specifically. You know how we always hear about cryptocurrencies and crypto tokens? Yeah. Are those the same thing or are they different? So that's what we're going to unpack today. Because I feel like they get used interchangeably a lot. They do, they do. But I have a feeling. That that tiny little difference in wording. Actually makes a big difference. Huge, yeah. So, you know, we're going to break that down for you today. What I think is so interesting is once you get those definitions down, it unlocks a whole new level of understanding of where blockchain can go and how to think about it. Totally, totally. Beyond just like the buy low, sell high kind of right, exactly. type of it all. Yeah, like I get that Bitcoin's different from Ethereum. But is a token just any other digital coin? Not quite. We should start with the foundation, I think, which is cryptocurrencies. Okay. So think of them like the engines of their own little independent economies. So just as the U.S. dollar powers the U.S. economy, Bitcoin fuels the Bitcoin network. Ether fuels the Ethereum network. So they're not in the system. They are the system. Precisely. In a way. And most importantly. Or I guess another key point is that they incentivize everything to run smoothly. Okay. So every time you make a transaction on one of these networks, yeah. you pay a small fee in that cryptocurrency. Okay. And that's how the network is maintained. That's how it's secured. So it's like built-in compensation for all the people and computers that are keeping things going. Exactly. Okay, that makes sense. So then how do tokens come into this whole thing? So tokens are built on top of those blockchains. Okay. So I think a good analogy is like apps on your phone. Okay. So one blockchain can support a whole ecosystem of different tokens that each have their own unique purpose. So the cryptocurrency is like the uh, operating system. Exactly. And then the tokens are all the apps you would put on that. A hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. That's a good way to think about it. So for example, you have basic attention token, BAT. Okay. That's built on Ethereum, mm. but that operates within the Brave browser ecosystem. Oh, Okay. Have you heard of that one? I have heard of that one. I've just never actually understood what it did. Okay, yeah. But that's really interesting to know. So it's not trying to be its own currency like Bitcoin. It's got its own little role within the Ethereum world. Right. Okay. And that's why this distinction is so important because it helps you see the bigger picture of what's possible with, with blockchain. 100%. Yeah. It's like uh, building a whole new house. Versus just decorating a room in an existing house. All right, folks, let's break this down for those of us who aren't crypto whizzes. Think of cryptocurrencies as the big shots of the digital money world. They're like the operating systems of the blockchain universe. Tokens, on the other hand, are more like the apps you download on your phone. They're built on top of these crypto operating systems and can do all sorts of cool tricks. It's like comparing apples to, well, Apple Pay. Same family, different functions. Love that. Yeah. You know, they're both valid, but they're totally different. Completely different undertakings. Yeah. And just like you wouldn't use a house key to open your car door. Right. You need the right token for the right function. Okay. That makes total sense. Within the blockchain. Within their own ecosystems. So okay. Yeah. So we've got the foundation with cryptocurrencies. We've got tokens on top of that. How do cryptocurrencies even work in practice? Yeah, it seems kind of magical, right? It does. It does. Um, It all comes down to what called consensus mechanisms. Okay. So that's kind of like the rules of the game. Right. So every blockchain has its own rule book, so to speak. That determines how transactions are processed, how we're validated. 
and how they're added to the blockchain. So it's like a global agreement of how things get done on this thing? Precisely. Okay. The two most common that you hear about. Are proof of work and proof of stake. I feel like I hear those all the time. All the time. What's the difference? So proof of work. Which is what Bitcoin uses. It's like this massive computational puzzle. That all of these miners are constantly trying to solve. Okay. And these miners are the ones that are providing computing power to the network. Okay. So they're racing to solve these really complex equations. And the first one to solve it gets to add the next block of transactions to the blockchain. Okay. And they're rewarded with Bitcoin. So it's like a constant competition to keep the network maintained. Yes. And it's also- This method requires a lot of energy. Yes, proof of work consumes significant energy, but it's more secure than proof of stake. When we're talking about implementing fair, democratic by design currency systems that can reshape our economy and have already given thousands of people access to banking for the first time, that security becomes crucial. It's why Bitcoin hasn't moved to proof of stake. Now let's zoom out and look at the bigger picture. Technologies like blockchain and AI are massive energy consumers, true, but they're also investments in our future. These technologies have the potential to pull millions from poverty, secure our supply lines, and even end global hunger. And like any investment, they come with costs. Speaking of costs, let's talk about U.S. energy independence, an achievement that was thought impossible just a decade ago. This shift hasn't just ensured freedom for U.S. citizens, it's reshaped the entire geopolitical landscape. Take the situation in Ukraine. Putin expected to use energy as a weapon, thinking he could turn off the UK's oil supply and get whatever he wanted. But the US ability to step in and supply energy to our allies completely derailed his plans. Can you imagine if Russia had been allowed to use energy as a weapon, especially during a time when people around the globe are dying from heat without air conditioning? This brings us to a crucial point. We need more energy, not less. Climate change is causing extreme weather events, and we can't debate using air conditioning when lives are at stake. The good news? We've drastically increased renewable energy production. We're on the brink of revolutionary technologies. Fusion power is on the horizon, and solar efficiency is advancing rapidly. There's even an episode about printing solar panels. Check out the link in the description. Now let's circle back to cryptocurrencies and blockchain. These technologies, along with AI, are driving innovation in energy production and usage. Many Bitcoin mining operations have already moved to all renewable energy sources. They're part of a broader technological revolution that's pushing us towards a decentralized future and more efficient energy solutions. The bottom line is this. Progress isn't about using less energy. It's about using it more intelligently and strategically. Sometimes that means increasing production in the short term to drive innovation for long-term efficiency and independence. It's a complex issue that requires nuanced understanding and forward-thinking solutions, not oversimplified criticisms. When we discuss the energy consumption of proof-of-work systems or AI, we need to consider this broader context. It's not just about cryptocurrency. It's about technological progress, global energy needs, and maintaining economic and political stability on the world stage. These are investments in our future, and the potential benefits far outweigh the costs. Who? Sorry for the impromptu TED talk there, folks. I guess I got a bit carried away. But you know, sometimes you just can't let oversimplifications slide, especially on topics this important. Energy isn't just about keeping our phones charged. It's about shaping the future of our world. So next time someone tries to boil down complex energy issues to a simple good or bad, remember there's always a bigger picture. Now, where were we? Oh, right, crypto tokens. Okay. Which has caused some controversy in terms of... Right, I can imagine, yeah. Yeah, it's sustainability and all of that. Yeah. So that's kind of where proof of stake comes in. Okay, so is that the alternative? It is. It's like a lottery system. Okay. Where those who hold a certain amount of the cryptocurrency... Okay. ...or stake it... Okay. ...are chosen at random to validate transactions. So it's way more energy efficient. Interesting. Which is why a lot of people think it's the future okay. of consensus mechanisms. And that's not just like theoretical, right? Ethereum is actually switching to proof of stake. Yes. That is a major development in the crypto world. So what does that mean? If I use Ethereum now, is it going to be faster and cheaper? 
It will be faster and cheaper to transact, yes. Okay. That's a benefit I can get behind. That's tangible. Exactly. I like it. Yeah, and I think... That's what um what we want you to kind of see is like beyond just the price fluctuations. Right. Thinking more about the technology and its use cases. Right, and how this actually works in the real world. Exactly. That's really interesting. And that leads us to tokens, right. which go beyond just being digital money. Okay. All right, so we covered cryptocurrencies, the engine, mm -hmm. and we talked about their rules, the consensus mechanisms, and how those work. But tokens, these apps built on top of it all. Right. How do they go beyond just being another form of digital cash? So that's where things get really interesting. Okay. Because... Imagine owning a piece of a company. Okay. Not through a traditional stock certificate. Okay. But with a security token that's recorded on the blockchain. So instead of this paper, it's all digital. Exactly. Right More secure, probably harder to lose right, right. than a physical document. Exactly. Um, or think of a utility token. Okay. Like a key. Okay. That unlocks access to specific features within a platform. So you could have a utility token for like Spotify that gives you ad-free listening. Ooh, that's something I could get behind. Okay. So it's not about trading the token for profit. It's about what that token actually does. Precisely. Okay. Um, and then you have things called commodity tokens, okay. which represent physical assets like gold or oil, yeah. but they're traded digitally on the blockchain. Okay. So this can make trading these commodities more efficient, more transparent. So I could be sipping my coffee. Knowing that the beans were purchased with a commodity token straight from the farmer, and it ensured fair compensation. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Um, and of course, we can't forget about... The craze that took over the world for a minute. NFTs. NFTs, exactly. Which, I mean, everyone and their dog was making digital art. But is that all it is, is art? So NFTs are what's called a non-fungible token. Okay. Meaning it's a unique digital asset. Okay. So... Think digital art, collectibles. You can even have virtual real estate. Okay. On platforms like Decentraland. Where each NFT... Is one of a kind. Okay. And the ownership is tracked on the blockchain. So it's like... Um, owning the original Mona Lisa versus owning a print of it. Exactly. You know, they might look the same, but one has that unique value. Exactly. But instead of a painting, it's, you know, some sort of digital asset. A hundred percent, yeah. Okay. It's, uh, it's really fascinating to see. The way that that technology is kind of blurring the lines between the physical and digital. It is. Yeah. Okay. Let's tackle NFTs, or as I like to call them, digital beanie babies for the 21st century. Imagine if you could own the original Mona Lisa, but instead of hanging it in your living room, it lives in your phone. That's basically what an NFT is, a unique digital asset that says, I own this particular string of ones and zeros. It's like having bragging rights in the digital world. Just remember, owning an NFT of a cool digital artwork doesn't stop others from right-clicking and saving it. But hey, at least you've got the blockchain receipt to prove you're the real digital art connoisseur. But it is, I will say, a little overwhelming to wrap your head around. Totally. So can you connect the dots here a little bit? Absolutely. What are the similarities and differences between... Cryptocurrencies and tokens. Absolutely. So I think at their core... Both cryptocurrencies and tokens are built on blockchain technology, okay. which is where they get their transparency, their security from. Okay. They both can be traded on exchanges. They can be held in crypto wallets. Okay. And they offer a level of decentralization that we haven't really seen before. But I think the fundamental difference comes down to their purpose oh. and how they're created. Okay. This is where it gets juicy. Yeah. Tell me more. So... Cryptocurrencies are like the foundation of their blockchain ecosystems, right? Okay. So they incentivize the network, they okay. secure the network, okay. they act as the primary unit of value within that ecosystem. Okay. Um, think of it like this. Creating a cryptocurrency is like building a brand new operating system. Okay. It's very complex, it's resource intensive, it requires a deep, deep... Understanding of blockchain technology. Okay. And tokens are a little simpler. Tokens are. Relatively speaking, yes. They're more like building an app okay. within that existing op operating system. So they're able to kind of piggyback. On that existing infrastructure of whatever blockchain that they're built on. So essentially, cryptocurrencies are the foundation, and the tokens are the applications that are built upon that foundation. You got it. Okay. Nailed it. I think this is starting to click now. Um, let's bring it back down to earth here for a second. Yeah. Why should we even care? 
That's the million dollar question, isn't it? It is. Right. It is. So for starters, imagine a world okay. where value transfer is instantaneous. Okay. Borderless. Okay. And accessible to anyone with an internet connection. Okay. Cryptocurrencies and tokens have the potential to completely revolutionize how we think about and interact with assets. It's like sending a text message, but with money attached to it. Exactly. Yeah. No more waiting for bank transfers to clear, dealing with like exorbitant international transfer fees. Right, exactly. Right. And this is huge implications for global finance. Yeah. Especially in regions where traditional banking systems are either like inaccessible or unreliable. Right, okay. But it goes beyond just finance. Okay. Imagine supply chains. Okay. Where every single step of a product's journey is tracked on the blockchain using tokens. Okay. Which ensures transparency. So no more counterfeit goods or anything like that. Theoretically, that's the idea. Okay. Right. Interesting. And what about using tokens to represent ownership of oh, like yeah. digital art, music, okay. even virtual real estate? I mean, we're already seeing NFTs shake up the art world. Yeah, yeah. And create these entirely new economies yeah, within yeah. online gaming platforms. It's crazy. I've seen the headlines of people spending millions of dollars for a JPEG. It's wild. It's mind blowing. It really is. But it also makes you think, like, what is ownership in the future going to look like? That's the quest. What is value going to look like? It's a whole new frontier, and we're really just scratching the surface yeah. of what's possible. Totally, totally. With any new technology, of right. course there are risks. Yeah. And there are challenges to consider. Of course, yeah. It's not all um, right. sunshine and rainbows. It's not all sunshine and rainbows, right? Exactly. What are some of the risks? Well, I mean, you mentioned it earlier. Volatility is a big one. Cryptocurrencies, tokens, they can fluctuate wildly in value. Yeah. Which some investors love, right? Yeah, right. That's exciting for them. Right. But it's also very risky. Right. It's not for the faint of heart. Definitely not. You could lose your shirt. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> Another challenge is the regulatory landscape. Okay. It's still so early. Governments around the world are still trying to figure out. Right. How do we regulate this new asset class? Right. So that lack of clear regulation. Can create some uncertainty. Okay. For both individuals and businesses operating in the space. So it's important to stay informed and, you know, understand the risks before you just go all in. A hundred percent. Yeah. Do your research. Yeah. Um, and then there are security concerns. Okay. So while blockchain technology itself is very secure. Right. There's always a risk. Right. Right. There's always a risk of hacking, there's scams, there's phishing attempts. So it's important to take precautions to protect your digital assets, just like you would with your physical belongings. Right. So it's like anything else. You have to be smart and you got to do your research. Exactly. And then finally, okay. there's the challenge of scalability. Oh. So as blockchain technology is adopted more widely, yeah. there's a question of, can it handle it? Yeah. Can it handle a large volume of transactions efficiently? So it's like trying to fit a whole city's worth of traffic onto a one-lane road. That's a great way to put it, yeah. Yeah. Things could get a little congested, right? Right, exactly. Um, developers are working on solutions. To improve scalability. Okay. But it's an ongoing challenge for sure. So it sounds like a lot to consider. But it also sounds really exciting. It's very exciting. It's like we're at the... Uh, the very beginning of something here. Oh, 100%. Which is cool. It feels very much like the early days of the internet. You yeah, know. Totally where there's all this potential. But also a lot of unknowns. Right, right. So how do we navigate that then? That's the question, right? Yeah. Thanks. The most important thing is to approach this space okay. with a healthy dose of skepticism okay. and critical thinking. Don't believe everything you read on the internet. Don't believe everything you read on the internet, okay. exactly. Okay. Do your own research. Okay. Understand the risks involved. Okay. And Probably the golden rule of investing. Yeah. Only invest what you can afford to lose. Exactly. Because it's very easy. To get caught up in the hype, yeah. the fear of missing out. Right. But it's important to stay grounded. Totally. It's totally. Oh, yeah. This technology is still in its early stages. Right. There will be bumps in the road. Okay. But there are also incredible opportunities right. for innovation and growth. It's like we're all pioneers here Re venturing into the unknown. 100%. Which is cool. I like that. Yeah. It's a little scary, but it's cool. It's a little scary, but it's cool. Yeah. It's going to be an interesting ride. That's for sure.
That is for sure. I'm still trying to process everything we've talked about. It's like we started with what's the difference between these digital coins? And now it's like, whoa, we could reimagine how everything works. Yeah. Like how we think about value and ownership. It is pretty mind blowing. It is. It is. When you really start to think about the potential. Yeah. And, you know, we touched on some of the challenges like volatility, regulation, security. But what about the human element in all of this? Oh, that's a great point. How do we make sure this technology doesn't just make existing inequalities worse? That's the million dollar question, right? Yeah. And it's something that we can't ignore. Um, you know, technology in and of itself is neutral, oh. but it's how we design it, how we implement it, how we regulate it. That determines whether it has a positive or negative impact on society. So it's not just building the technology, it's building it responsibly. 100%, yeah. Okay. And I think a big part of that is being mindful of issues like access, affordability, education. Yeah, yeah. Right. Because if the benefits of this technology are only accessible to a select few, yeah, then it could actually end up worsening the disparities that we already see. It's like we're building this bridge to a better future, but only some people have the map to get there. That's a great analogy. I love that. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why it's so important to have diverse voices at the table. Okay. When we're talking about shaping this space, totally. we need developers, entrepreneurs, mm. policymakers, artists, activists. Everyday citizens, we need everyone. It's a team effort. It's a team effort, not a tech race. Exactly. And it requires open dialogue, collaboration. And being willing to address some of those ethical considerations. A hundred percent. Yeah. Head on. Yeah. So for someone listening who's like, really intrigued by all of this, yeah. but maybe a little overwhelmed. They're like, where do I even begin? Right. What advice would you give to someone who wants to like dip their toes into the crypto waters? Yeah. But do it responsibly. Responsibly. I love that. Yeah. I think it starts with education. Okay. There are so many resources available now. Online, mm -hmm. offline. Yeah. Courses, articles, podcasts, communities. Tons of stuff. Tons of stuff where you can learn the basics of blockchain, cryptocurrency, tokens. So do your homework. Do your homework. Don't just like throw money at it. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I always like to remind people, it's not just about the technology itself. Okay. It's about the problems that it can solve. And the opportunities that it creates. Okay. So think about what are you interested in? Is it finance, art, gaming, supply chains. Find your passion. Find your passion. Exactly. And see how it connects. And then see how blockchain and crypto are being used in those areas. Exactly. Okay. Hello. And don't be afraid to experiment. Okay. Ask questions. Connect with other people who are exploring this space. It's a whole community. It's a huge community and it's very diverse. Yeah. And there's a lot to learn from each other. So be curious. Be curious. Be critical. Be critical. And be connected. That's it. That's the recipe right there. I love that. Well, I think that's a great place to wrap up. This deep dive, yeah. we've covered so much. A lot of ground. From the nitty gritty the tech and how cryptocurrencies and tokens work to, yeah. you know, how they could potentially change the future. How they could reshape our digital future. It's exciting. Yeah. I hope everyone listening is walking away feeling, one, informed. Two, inspired. And maybe three, a little mind blown. A little mind blown, a little overwhelmed in the best way possible. In the best way, exactly. Yeah. Well, until next time, stay curious, stay informed. And stay engaged. Exactly. This is an exciting space to be a part of. It really is. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of crypto. We'll see you next time. Until then, take care. Well, my tokenized terrors, we've just scratched the surface of this digital rabbit hole. From houses becoming tradable tokens to memes worth millions, the crypto world is reshaping reality faster than you can say blockchain. Whether this fills you with excitement or dread or both, one thing's for sure, the future waits for no one. So stay curious, stay informed, and maybe think twice before right-clicking and saving that next viral image. It could be someone's million-dollar baby. This is Theodore, signing off and quietly questioning every life choice that led me to explaining why JPEGs are now more valuable than my entire existence. Until next time, keep your tokens close and your private keys closer. Yeah.